All right, here we have all the components for a four-ton underwater Hyperloop insulation, including the rack and the two actual Hyperloops. That's how they come out of the box. Now Harry will put the rack together. You see everything is color-coded. The key is to put all the colors on top. That tells us which side is up, which side is down, so all the colors go up. So we put orange to orange. And this is where we glue that joint. Uh, everything is glued except the parts that you're putting together. Please do use some glue, regular old PVC glue. We don't need the solvent because we're not looking for a watertight connection. We're just looking for a strong connection. While he's putting, puts a yellow to yellow over here yellow to yellow over here. And then we put green to green. The last piece here we're not going to put on yet because we'll put that on after we get the second loop on the rack. So you put this whole portion together, this will make it easier to get the whole uh, loop onto the rack. Okay, now we're going to put the actual loop on the rack. Again, this is how it comes out of the box. The key is to thread through the first parallel supports. You put the header through the first parallel supports. And the way you do that is that you go through the middle portion of the parallel supports like that. It pops right through and then you pull the top through just like that. And now we thread the rest of the loop around all of the inside bars. So the first one goes through there, and it goes through the next inside bar, and so forth. Note that this is one guy was able to put the whole loop together by himself. And then we again pop it through in the same method, through the middle, and then pop it out, just like that. Now, next step, before we put the second loop on, is we'll zip tie this loop to the rack. And you'll note that each of the poles, the vertical poles, has holes in it. Let's look at this one here. Have holes in it and we use that to zip tie the spacer bars to the vertical pole. You want to make sure not to zip tie the tubes to the hole but just the spacer bars. If we zip tie the tubes and we're putting stress on the tubes unnecessarily, we don't want to do that. And you also want to lift the panel up as you're zip tying it so that we get the bottom of the panel off. You see how he's holding that with his foot? And that will pick the unit up just like that. And we keep going around like so. There are three holes in each vertical bar. He skips this one over here. It's unnecessary because we uh, strap it on the other side. And since it's still taking a tight turn, then it stays very stable. So he's just going right to the next spacer bar over there. Like so. And like I said, we said there are three. So you would actually do all three to give the most security uh, but to be clear the zip ties are nice for keeping everything off the ground making sure we're protecting the panel while we're getting it into the water but it's not relied upon for the structure once it's underwater so the hyperloop will the rack will keep the hyperloop in position even without the zip ties that's where these ends grab the headers and make sure that everything stays in place okay so we zip tied the unit to the uh, vertical PVC pipes, but we didn't zip tie the bottom holes because those we can do once we flip the whole rack over afterwards. It'll just make it easier to access those holes. Also, note that this last piece is staying on the side, and now we'll put the second loop on the rack. This one goes in a little differently. The trick is here, you first put it into the two uh, crossbars this way. With the spacer bars facing in, that's the key, is that the spacer bars should always face in. in. These are the spacer bars right here. Okay. 
and we just wrap it around. That locks the header in place right there. And then we keep coming around and do the same thing on this side. This is the reason that we don't put in that last crossbar is because we want to have the leverage on this end to put the header in. Now that the header is in, now we can put in the final piece. And you can basically just push the bottom in together uh, and then glue the top. Then when we flip the whole rack over, you can glue the bottom. So that's where we would have glued that joint right there. And then when we flip it over, we could glue the other side. And that's when also we'll zip tie everything together. We're not zip tying this inside header because that's actually going to be held up by the fusion joint over there and the two crossbars will support the header the whole way through. Uh, this one will also have the bottom fusion joint. That'll be your input fluid and the return will be from these two here. So here we have the complete unit and I will flip it over so that we can then zip tie the other side. It's nice to flip it over the uh, strong part there where we have the cross beam. It just makes it very easy to roll the whole unit. And now we will do the other zip ties as well as fusion can be done on this side. We do have a top and a bottom and reason being is that as you see the PVC sticks up higher here that way this can be the portion that uh, sits on the ground and the unit will sit up off the ground and also when we're transporting it it will all sit up off the ground.